Welcome to a quick tutorial on how to use TouchBase for tablets. You can download TouchBase SM2 for free on the Google Play Store or the App Store. First, let's look at our active inbox. As you can see, I have two new messages, one of which is a showing request. So when I open it up, I see the message and I can click on reply. I can then confirm, cancel, or send an other type message. So I'm going to confirm. What's great about the active inbox is that my messages will stay there until which time I've answered them, even if I open it and take a look. I can also toggle between my archives, which is my last 30 days of messages, and my current messages in my active inbox. Pending responses allows me to see the messages that I have sent out that are still waiting for an answer. Next is sending a message. So I have many types of messages to choose from, including multi-showing, showing requests, confirmations, cancellations, gift showing feedback, request information on a property, or other type message. So I'm going to send a showing request. I can type the agent's name, the address, or the MLS of the property. If I type the agent's name, I'm able to see a list of all of their properties. Now I can see if the property is available for showing or not, and I see I'll need to ask for a confirmation. So I can see my message was successfully sent. And now it's in my pending responses section. Next is my listings. And as you can see, I can toggle between my active and inactive listings. Showing settings and notes allows me to set up an automatic note sent with confirmation. So instead of typing out this message every time I hit confirm, I can type it out once and it will be sent automatically. I can also add the lockbox info, the required notice before showing, and choose whether or not I want to allow more than one visit at the same time. I can also modify my seller details. So I can put in my seller's name, and I can add their email as well as their phone number. I can then choose what type of message I would like them to be copied in on. So for example, a showing request can be yes, no, or on demand. And that means that my seller can actually choose to confirm their own showings. So they'll get a notification on either their cell phone or on the email that I've entered. Next is showing availability. This is a great time-saving tool because it allows you to pre-program when your seller is available to show. So you have three options, not possible periods in red, pre-approved periods in green, and open houses in blue. So you choose the type of availability, the start and ending time, and then you choose whether or not you would like it to repeat on a weekly basis. Now here's where it gets really cool. If somebody sends me a showing request during a period that I've pre-approved, they'll automatically receive my showing instructions that I've added into that showing settings and notes section earlier, along with the lockbox code if there is one. So at this point, the showing basically books itself. I can take a look at the activity for each property, my past showings, and if applicable, my upcoming showings. And I can open up each one and actually take a look at the details, the history, and so on. And I can see the feedback for each of my properties. So I have the general feedback. And then below in the comments, I can actually open it up and take a look at the individual comments and level of interest for each showing. If I want to send a message to the agent, I can hit reply, and if I'm using a device with phone capabilities, I can press call, or I can archive the message. Next is reports. Uh, the reports are really great because you can go anywhere from very detailed to very concise. So I toggle whether I want to see sent or received messages, and I choose the type of message. I'm going to leave it on all message types for the example. I choose my from and to date. Remember that touch-based reports go back up to two years. And then I hit display report. So I can see that I have 19 messages in the period I've chosen. 
and you can see that it's very, very detailed. My appointment activity reports, however, are very concise. Let me give you a quick example. So I really only see the information that I need to see right away. So just going back to detailed reports, I want to show you how to set up an automatic report. So I click on New Subscription. I name my report. Let's name it uh, Report for Andy. I choose which time I'd like the email to be sent, whether I want it to recur on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, and the format I would like the report sent in. Then I set up the email. And I have up to three emails, so I could send it to myself, my seller, and my second listing agent, for example. I then choose the subject of the email, and I can even set up uh, the content of the email under message. I can toggle sent to receive and the type of message. And if I wanted to do it for just one property for my seller, I could actually just go back to my reports and choose message report by property instead. So I choose the property from a drop down, uh, the type of message, the from and to date. Um, and then I hit display report, or again, I can set up an automatic report if that's what I want to do. Next is my calendar. The calendar updates every time I set up a new appointment. So you'll notice this little triangle in the bottom right. That means that I have an event that day. I can click on each one and open up the details, see the history of the message, um, send another message if I need to. If I needed to cancel, I could do that as well. I'm just going to send another message and say, hey, there's a big dog, by the way, forgot to mention. So now I'll show you the new settings section. So I have my picture that's pulled from the real estate board and I can go and modify my reception profile. So I see all of the different ways that I receive my messages, and I can add an email, SMS, which is text message or pager. And if I want to add an SM2 app, I just download it directly onto that device. For each destination, I can choose which type of message will be sent to that device. So for example, I want only showing requests to go to this email. I untick everything else, and I just go back. Let's say I wanted to add a cell phone. I just type in the number, choose my service provider, hit save. And then I can go back in and choose the destination option, so which type of message is going to go to this device. Just remember that all six of them have to be ticked off. They don't have to all be on the same device, though. Then I have my user notes. These are great because like the showing availability, they're visible to people who pull up my name before they even send me a showing request. So let's say you know the note goes here, uh, then I toggle whether I'd like only my office members to see it or if it's available to everyone. I choose the covering period, so beginning and ending time is a custom period, versus all the time, which means I have to come back and manually turn it off. And I can take it one step further and apply a filter, so beginning and ending time, as well as certain days of the week only. So now I can see that this note appears in my list of user notes. And again, people will be able to see that before they send me a message. I can add a replacement. So let's say I'm going on vacation, for example. I can choose one of my colleagues to replace me while I'm gone. They'll receive all of my touch-based messages during that time. So I can decide if I want to be copied in or not. Um, but it's important to remember that if you choose not to be copied in, you can always go into your reports when you come back and see what you've missed. So lastly in the settings section is my team. This is where I can add or remove team members.
We've added a form in the help section that allows you to contact the TouchBase support team directly. So whether it's uh, you know, just a general question or some feedback, feel free to contact us at any time and one of our agents will get back to you within 24 business hours. Thanks for watching.